Hello, everyone. Glad to be here, and uh, amazing to see a full house. There are a few uh, uh, seats in the, at the front, so if you can get some more people, uh, there, there are definitely more seats, but uh, amazing to see everyone here in a full house. Uh, shame we can't see the uh, people there on the uh, virtual platform, uh, and really excited to be here at uh, KubeCon. And today I'd like to talk to you about Open Telemetry, a project that I'm very uh, passionate about, uh, the vision, the reality, and how to get started with it. And let's start with a question. How many tools does a company use, on average, to collect telemetry data from its systems? <laughs> many. Think about logs, metrics, traces. Think about your front end app, your uh, back end app, your infrastructure, everything. How many tools? 10. Any other guesses? Well, recent uh, uh, surveys show that uh, companies use, on average, between 5 to 10 different tools to collect telemetry data from, uh, from the systems. 5 to 10. You can reduce it to one unified standard platform. That's the story of open telemetry. I'm Dotan Horvitz. Uh, I'm the principal developer advocate at logs.io. At logs.io, we provide uh, essentially cloud native observability platform that's based on popular open source tools such as uh, Prometheus and Jaeger and uh, obviously open telemetry and other projects. Um, I'm an advocate of open source and communities uh, in general and the CNCF in particular. That's why it's very exciting to be here uh, on the KubeCon stage. Uh, I co-organize the local CNCF chapter in Tel Aviv. I uh, co-organize uh, DevOps days. I have a podcast, uh, Open Observability Talks, on open source uh, DevOps and observability. So if you're uh, podcast fans, do uh, uh, check it out. Uh, and in general, you can find me everywhere at Horvitz. And let's talk about observability. As you all know, observability is essentially uh, the ability to understand the state of our system based on the telemetry data that it emits. And the vision talks about uh, unified observability across different signal types, uh, classically the three pillars, logs, metrics, and traces, but also across different sources. So again, think about your uh, front-end code, your back-end code, your uh, Kafka, Redis, other open source uh, projects, cloud services, essentially just fusing all of these uh, together to gain uh, insights and observability into your system. That's the vision. The reality, however, is much more fragmented. And the reason is exactly what we asked at the beginning. The reason is that we use so many different tools for our observability. And each tool and each vendor uh, has its own API and SDK for uh, instrumenting different programming languages, and then uh, daemon, collector, agent for collecting, aggregating, processing that data, uh, and then uh, its own data model and uh, protocol for uh, transmitting that and uh, sending it over. And all of that is not only uh, uh, an operational headache running so many different tools, uh, but more importantly, it creates tight coupling between the uh, telemetry collection side and the storage and uh, analytics backend. Uh, and most importantly, it makes it very, very difficult to uh, correlate that data and uh, uh, be able to gain that unified observability uh, across these essentially data silos. So that's what open telemetry comes to solve in a nutshell. So open telemetry, or uh, OTEL, uh, as its nickname. So if I say OTEL, do uh, forgive me. That's how usually <laughs> the, the, the group internally uh, calls it, uh, is an observability framework for generating and capturing, uh, collecting 
telemetry data from uh, systems, cloud native systems, across logs, metrics, and traces. So one, one framework to rule them all, if you'd like. Um, and uh, it's, uh, a, it's a, a project under the CNCF. It's an incubating project. It's, uh, in essence, uh, uh, in fact, a merge of open tracing and open census uh, projects of the CNCF. So if you're familiar with them, uh, that's the future path. It's, uh, you need to move. That's, <laughs> that's especially uh, interesting for you, this talk. And I'm very happy to be here, especially here on KubeCon stage, to say that open telemetry has been vastly adopted across the industry. So you see all the cloud vendors, all the monitoring and observability solutions. Everyone has been aligning behind open telemetry, which is fantastic for us as a community and for the CNCF. Um, it's also uh, the second most active project in the CNCF today. In fact, it's the second most active after Kubernetes itself, which is astounding if you, if you ask me. So just to show you how much excitement, how much activity, and how much is going, uh, goes on in this project. And, uh, and by the way, this is taken from uh, the uh, CNCF DevStats uh, dashboards. So you can uh, go check it out uh, yourselves and uh, slice and dice the data. But uh, essentially, it's pretty consistent for, for uh, a lot of time, uh, for a long time already. And I hope that I convinced you that open telemetry is interesting and that you are, uh, and the reason that this is important because this is how projects become de facto standards. When you see the industry aligning behind it, when you see it's very active and moving. So I'm really excited and I truly believe that this is, is going to converge the industry. And uh, I hope that I managed to uh, convince you or at least that you're interested to hear more. So let's uh, dive uh, deeper into what uh, open telemetry uh, gives us. So in essence, OpenTelemetry uh, provides us the uh, APIs, SDKs, and tools for generating uh, telemetry data, logs, metrics, traces, uh, from our own uh, applications. Um, and then that's the, the bluish part on the, uh, the left-hand side. And then a, a unified way of collecting and processing that data across uh, different sources, uh, both our apps and other types of sources, infrastructure and others. And then that's the uh, green uh, part in the middle, and then a standard way of uh, exposing and transmitting that data, uh, the telemetry data, that's the orange part, and then sending it off to whichever, whichever backend uh, you choose. Open telemetry does not take any stand in the backend. Uh, you're up to, uh, it's, it's your choice. Open telemetry has uh, lots of integrations, as we'll see. Uh, it's not part of OpenTelemetry scope. So that's uh, OpenTelemetry in a nutshell. And don't worry, I'm going to explain each and every one of these components uh, in greater detail now. But before uh, going into the components, I'd like to um, uh, talk a bit about OpenTelemetry specification, uh, which is not a component in itself, but it governs all the other implementations, open telemetry implementations out there. And uh, essentially, it provides uh, a specification to describe cross-language requirements and expectations uh, across uh, the implementations. So it defines the API spec, the SDK spec, and the data spec, things such as semantic conventions, annotations, uh, and so on, across logs, metrics, and traces. And though you won't probably as end users interact directly with the specification on a regular basis uh, as much as the other components, it is important to understand that because this comes to solve the exact problem we talked about before of fragmentation of each tool and each vendor having its own, uh, and each programming language having, having its own uh, 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 APIs, SDKs, formats, and so on. And moreover, having that uh, across one platform allows then the correlation between uh, the data. So it's not just uh, one, it's one that can correlate across signals and across sources. So that's very important to, uh, to be aware of. And the first component that most people uh, encounter are the client libraries. OpenTelemetry provides one API and one SDK per language 
with which you can instrument uh, and extract logs, metrics, traces from your uh, application. Of course, adhering to the specification that we talked about uh, before. It also provides integrations with popular libraries and frameworks, uh, RPC, storage, uh, web uh, frameworks, and so on, uh, for, per language, of course, so that they can extract from these languages more information and propagate context and, and so on within these frameworks. And also auto-instrumentation agents uh, per language, uh, depending on the languages, that allow for a low-code to maybe no-code instrumentation so that you don't need to uh, modify your code to, ex to start extracting uh, at least table stakes type of uh, metrics and, and, and data. So essentially, uh, OpenTelemetry's uh, mission statement is to allow the full range between the fully manual instrumentation to the fully automated instrumentation and anything in between. And that's important to say anything in between because you can combine. You don't need to decide either or. You can start with auto-instrumentation to get some table stakes and also lower barrier to entry. And then you can add, on top of that custom instrumentation, to add more fine-grained uh, zoom in in areas that you find important enough. Uh, and also, it accommodates to, uh, to different situations. If I have uh, something that I can't modify the code, I, can, I need to mod monitor as black box monitoring, uh, because I can't modify or I'm not allowed to modify or it's a third party, then, for example, auto-instrumentation would be the only option. It would be a must-have. So you get the full range uh, of, of the instrumentation capabilities. So that's open telemetry client libraries. Next up, I'd like to talk about open telemetry collector uh, that can collect uh, telemetry both from the SDKs that we talked about before but also from uh, other sources. It could uh, collect from infrastructure components, open source uh, cloud services. I don't know, you have a Kafka running, you want to send it, you have a MySQL, you want, uh, 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 I don't know, AWS or Azure and Google services, whatever, you can collect uh, and the collector can uh, uh, support that. Process it, aggregate, and then send it to whichever backend uh, you choose. And as you could imagine, you can see that here also, it's built as a typical data pipeline, uh, process, data processing pipeline. So it has uh, uh, receivers in multiple protocols, it has uh, processors, and then it has exporters in multiple protocols. So just as an example, if, I, if my code emits traces in a Jaeger format, I just plug in the Jaeger receiver. If I want uh, uh, metrics from Kafka, I plug in the Kafka receiver, and so on and so forth. That's for the receivers. Then the processors have uh, many types of processors to do different types of uh, uh, aggregations and processing, uh, batching, filtering, sampling, and so on. And I can also uh, uh, chain, concatenate uh, different processes to create more elaborate logic. And then, based on the backend uh, analytics tool that I use, and it doesn't have to be a single tool, I can use uh, several, I plug in the relevant uh, uh, exporters. I can, if I want to send it to I don't know, AWS X-Ray, I, I, I have the receiver for that. I want to send it to uh, I don't know, Google PubSub, I, I plug it to that. I want to send it to Kafka, uh, to Prometheus, to uh, uh, my company Logs.io as, as an exporter. At any vendor and any tool uh, largely supported, you have exporters. So that's about the collector. And the last component that I would like to talk about is the uh, open telemetry protocol or OTLP. Uh, and OTLP is uh, essentially a general purpose telemetry data delivery protocol. It can be used, as you can see here, uh, to send between the uh, SDK, the, o the OTL SDK to the OTL collector. It can be used to send between the collector and the backend analytics tool if it's, uh, it supports it. It can be used between intermediary nodes, such as two different collectors, or, or any other purpose. It's really a general purpose uh, protocol. Uh, it's uh, a client server request response. Uh, as you can see here at the bottom, if you can see, it's uh, based on uh, uh, gRPC and HTTP 1.1 uh, uh, for the transport. So you have OTLP over HTTP and OTLP over uh, gRPC. Uh, it currently supports the binary protobuf encoding. Um, and they're, they're in the works, uh, uh, there's a plan to support also JSON encoding over HTTP. So you'll have JSON over OTLP over HTTP. Um, and 
uh, it, it's agnostic. So as you can see, you can actually take the proto file and you can generate your own gRPC clients yourselves if, if you so choose. That's part of the, the freedom that you have when you use this. You, you're not locked into even using these implementations that OpenTelemetry provides. It's part of the mindset of OpenTelemetry. Another important point that I would like to make about the mindset is that OpenTelemetry as a project does not mandate you to use OTLP protocol. As I've shown you just now, with the collector, the collector supports many protocols for the receivers, for the ingest, many protocols for the exporters, for the uh, egress. Uh, so um, you're not bound to it. However, as a, as, an, as a holistic framework aiming to provide a holistic way of generating and collecting telemetry data, the purpose is to get the industry into one unified protocol that can then have the, also the benefit of correlating data because if we send logs, metrics, and traces together with a unified data model, then we can also uh, create the correlation and we can align the semantic conventions and so on. So that's uh, the mindset and that's the goal. And the same goes, by the way, to other components as well. You can use the SDK, uh, Autel SDK without the collector, for example, sending from the SDK directly to a backend analytics tool. Uh, you can use the collector without an SDK, like I gave the example of uh, collecting from Kafka directly, and so on. So it's a loosely coupled, yet a holistic framework uh, aiming to provide uh, a, a standard, unified uh, way of generating and collecting telemetry data. That's about uh, uh, OTLP and uh, maybe the, the mindset. Uh, these are the main components that, uh, that I'll cover. There are other components and uh, other elements. There's an open telemetry operator that allows you to uh, install that uh, easily on, on the Kubernetes and uh, other components. But uh, for the sake of this discussion, uh, I will uh, keep it here. And now we'd like to talk about, so, OK, what's the, what's the state of open telemetry project? Uh, and most importantly, is that GA? Can I uh, use it in production? That's the most interesting question, right? So uh, show of hands, who thinks yes? OK, and who thinks no? And who thinks uh, it depends? <laughs> Great. So uh, like any interesting uh, question, the answer is it depends. And the reason it depends is because Open telemetry is, in fact, not a monolithic uh, project, but uh, an aggregate of multiple uh, 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 groups, and uh, each working on a different um, uh, part of this huge uh, endeavor. So you have the uh, metric uh, standardization uh, specification group, and the uh, tracing one, and the logging one, and then you have the Java one, and the .NET one, and the Go one, and uh, many more. Um, I don't know if there are maintainers here, they will probably uh, can name a thousand more, so I'm, I'm oversimplifying even that, but uh, just to get the, the drift. And each SIG, and each uh, special interest group, and each uh, working group, and each uh, such component has its own uh, development life cycle, which means that different parts of open telemetry may be in different state of the maturity uh, life cycle, which is, in the uh, CNCF terms, draft experimental, stable, and deprecated. Just for those who are uh, more new, we have like 67% new people there this year in KubeCon. It's very, very exciting. Um, and just to uh, align the terms with the common terms in the industry, so uh, stable would be uh, GA, generally available, what you'd be looking for to run it in uh, production. Um, and it comes with guarantees, uh, like backwards compatibility and, and so on. Uh, uh, experimental would be beta, uh, so something you can start POCing on, proof of concept. Uh, so just to align terms, and again, uh, apologies with the maintainers, I will stick to the common terms just to make sure that everyone understands the state. Um, so okay, we understand that it's uh, complicated, thank you, Dotan, but still, what's the state of uh, uh, open telemetry? And for that, I'd like to break it down by uh, signal types. And the first uh, signal, and the most mature one, is uh, traces. And open telemetry uh, is uh, generally available for traces uh, since last year, um, which means that the tracing uh, API and SDK and the uh, protocol specifications are stable, the collector's table. Uh, we have many client libraries, uh, SDK implementations, 
uh, that are version 1.0 or above. Uh, version 1.0 is when the tracing implementation is uh, complete. Uh, so as you can see here, we have for uh, 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 Java and Go and .NET and Python and C++ and JavaScript and Ruby and Erlang and Swift and working on, on more and it keeps on advancing so rapidly that maybe that is even advanced since, uh, since the last time I made the slide. And most importantly, as I said, GA means that it comes with guarantees for uh, uh, long-term support, for backwards compatibility, for uh, dependency isolation, what you'll be expecting to run it in production. Next up is metrics, and that's actually one of the most exciting news, at least on the observability front from this uh, uh, KubeCon. Uh, I'm happy to say, for those who missed the, uh, the news, that metrics has reached uh, uh, the release candidate, uh, just uh, the announced on KubeCon, uh, and release candidate, again, just to uh, align terms, means that uh, it's practically GA, now uh, collecting the feedback from users, and if nothing major, critical comes up, it should be uh, turning the same versions will be turned GA within a matter of a, a week or, or a couple of weeks more. That's, that's the uh, time frame. So the API, the SDK, the protocol are obviously stable. Uh, uh, the API and SDK specifications are already implemented in uh, uh, Java and .NET and uh, uh, Python in uh, RC, in release candidate. Uh, uh, JavaScript is just a week away or, or something like that. So, uh, and then many more languages will join in the coming uh, month or two. Um, in terms of the collector, the collector supports uh, uh, metric pipelines. And very important to say, because as you also heard in the previous talk here in this uh, hall, and generally, Prometheus being a, a de facto standard in the, in the metric side. So uh, there's Prometheus support that has been worked on in collaboration with the uh, Prometheus community. Uh, I think it's a great example of collaboration under the CNCF, so uh, uh, applause to the, to the teams involved. And it means that the SDK has exporters in Prometheus format. Uh, the, collect, the Autel collector has uh, receivers and exporters in Prometheus uh, formats, Prometheus remote write. Uh, the OTLP to Prometheus uh, specification is aligned, uh, the, the data model, uh, so uh, that's, that's there. And the least, um, I guess, advanced signal is uh, logs that are still experimental. Uh, we hope to have that uh, GA'd uh, this year. Um, and with logging, it's important to, uh, to understand. Uh, logging is the most long-standing signal, obviously, so uh, 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 everyone has logging, every system has logging, it's been there for ages, so we can't just uh, uh, ignore that, obviously. So the first focus is to align with existing and support existing uh, logging uh, sources and logging systems. Um, and uh, for that, uh, there's also work around the, uh, around the, <coughs> sorry, around the appenders, log appenders that are under development in, in many languages, so that even existing logs that are typically text-based, unstructured, maybe even file-based, uh, can still be augmented with additional data, such as uh, trace ID and, and other uh, important data to allow correlation. Oh, and obviously, obviously, sending that over OTLP. So even for existing logging sources, being able to ingest and then uh, model it over OTLP and send it alongside metrics and traces. That's the, the first priority, but then uh, following up uh, as a holistic uh, uh, framework, as we talked about the, the mission statement, uh, we wa we're working to build a new, uh, uh, strongly typed and machine-readable uh, format also for logs. So it's not discarded, it's definitely the end goal, and to try and converge the industry also around that. Uh, and I think the most, uh, if, if you look at the components, that for example, you see that the protocol is, is uh, stable, uh, and can send, uh, that's actually also relatively new news. I think less than a week ago, we, we've announced that the, uh, uh, pro the OTLP protocol for logs is already stable and supports the data model that has been agreed, uh, I think, a month or two ago. Uh, and, the, uh, and the SDK is experimental uh, and can already transmit over uh, OTLP. Uh, one, one thing that is uh, important uh, is that the API, for example, is left to last, it's still draft because again, we, we're, we haven't prioritized inventing new APIs for that. However, there is now the shift to focus or, or adding the focus on the specification side, getting a specification, what does a log, what should the structured, well-structured, uh, strongly typed uh, log look like? Uh, and for that, also exciting news from the recent months is the collaboration with uh, ECS, Elastic Common Schema, 
uh, uh, for those who know that, so collaboration between the uh, uh, communities, essentially, the open source communities, to uh, uh, get all the aggregated knowledge and work that's been done around the Elastic Common Schema and merge it together with Open Telemetry uh, and, and uh, join forces around that. So uh, really exciting news about that as well. So uh, this is about the state. And uh, in the bit of time that I have left, I want to first applaud the, the main achievement here. So let's uh, give her a big round of applause to everyone here. A lot of hard work. We have some maintainers here at the audience, uh, so uh, we all owe them a great deal of, uh, of uh, gratitude for, for achieving this very important milestone, and also for those who worked on the logging, as I said, for getting the, the data and protocol uh, uh, stable. Um, and for those who are interested in more about the roadmap and the future path, it's uh, less the scope of this short talk, but there was a very interesting maintainers uh, track talk uh, uh, by the Open Telemetry uh, community sharing what's up next, like uh, making the uh, operational side easier, like uh, maybe even uh, adding more signals beyond logs, metrics, tracing, discussions around continuous profiling. Uh, so uh, if you are interested, do check out the recording from that session, a fascinating session. But for the last uh, bit of the talk, I would like to um, uh, discuss how to get started with open telemetry, and I'd like to offer my, my bit of advice. And you should start by knowing your stack. You need to figure out the, the basic four questions. First, which programming languages are, uh, does your organization use? Especially if you're a polyglot organization, so front end, back end. Also, which frameworks you use for these? For example, we use uh, Java with, uh, with uh, Spring, and then we use uh, front end Node.js with uh, Happy and Express. So it's important because that will help you determine which uh, uh, SDKs and agents uh, you can use and need to use for your, your application. Then, which signals you intend to collect from your system, uh, and uh, logs, metrics, traces, and also in which formats, which is uh, particularly important if it's a brownfield project, you already have components out there emitting uh, uh, telemetry, I don't know, traces in Zipkin format, or, or I don't know what, and, and you need to adhere to that. And that will determine the receivers that you will use in the open telemetry collector. And then uh, which analytics tools you're going to send to in the back end, which will determine, of course, the exporters you, that you uh, may want to use. And once you analyze and figure out the stack, your vertical stack that is relevant for you, then uh, just go and check the status of the relevant components and follow the guide. And for that, there is a very useful page that we've set up as part of moving from the sandbox to the incubation under the CNCF, the opentelemetry.io slash status. That's a very good starting point to see the high level uh, status overview. There are many other useful uh, resources on, on that site, like the, the docs, obviously. And there's a, a also relatively new registry that you can actually search for your stack. So you realize that you need, uh, I don't know, .NET. You uh, Google, you search .NET, and then it will take you to the specific links on the GitHub repo that, uh, 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 that pertain to that. So it, it's a really helpful way to navigating around the uh, massive uh, GitHub repo there. I'd also like to invite you to check out the uh, uh, beginner's guide to open telemetry that I, uh, that I wrote. It, it doesn't replace any of what I've shown. It's just maybe a, a higher level uh, uh, beginner's like hello world. So uh, I, I created a short link so that it's easy to remember, uh, uh, bit.ly hotel-kubecon. Um, and you have there uh, the explanation that I said in greater detail about the different components. Uh, it has sub-guides for different programming languages. Again, just the hello world, not the deep dive. And also the links to get the deep dive into uh, the massive uh, data that you have within the open telemetry community. Um, so uh, I hope that you find it useful. And by the way, if you, uh, if you do have uh, uh, feedback on the, on the guide, or if you have feedback on this talk, or if you have any, any questions, we're now ever going to have a Q&A. &A. Uh, so do, don't go, we have time for you to ask, and also for the people from the, uh, from the virtual platform. Uh, then feel, feel free to reach out to me also after, at Horvitz. And with that, thank you very much. And uh, don't go. Thank you. Uh, can we help? Uh, if you just raise your hands, uh, we'll pass the microphone so you can ask uh, questions.
And uh, for the virtual uh, uh, audience, please uh, uh, write down in the Q&A uh, box in the platform, and we'll also take some uh, questions from the virtual platform. Uh, any question? Now is the time. We have also maintainers, I think. I, I've spotted a few familiar faces, so you may have the authorities far greater than me. If they, you have specific questions, how is it in Go? How is it in uh, .NET? How is that in this export or that? So uh, uh, you have the right people uh, hanging around here. Hi. Uh, sorry? Okay. Yeah. On your left. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, is there any Can plans? Can you stand up? Just, uh, oh, yeah, okay. of course. Sorry, uh, it's difficult to Sorry. see with the lights. Yeah. Is there any plans to support uh, error tracking as well, like something like Sentry or? Error tracking is uh, is an interesting part. As I said, currently it's uh, logs, metrics, and traces, and the next signal that is intended to be, or now the discussions in early phases of discussion is the continuous profiling, things such as uh, Parkai open source, if you're familiar with, or others. Uh, some uh, Sentry actually doesn't work that way. It's based on uh, on um, uh, how do they call the snapshots. But uh, ones that are based on uh, that are modeled can be modeled after as events uh, in the, similar to logs. Uh, it can be converted and, and then uh, relayed over the same mechanism that is built for for logs. Uh, so it's interesting maybe to explore adapters that can actually uh, transform that. Uh, but I don't know of any specific goal to uh, adhere specifically to these, uh, these formats. Again, we, if we have uh, one of the maintainers wanting to have any more detailed uh, information, uh, feel free to jump in. Uh, I hope I answered the question. Yeah, yeah. thanks. Uh, we've got an online question with a few upvotes, yeah. which is how do things like synthetic monitoring, real user monitoring, and application performance monitoring fit into open telemetry? Uh, so that's an amazing question. I actually didn't know if I have the time for this talk, but uh, if we get it in the Q&A, it's great. Because one of the uh, uh, work that has been started in uh, OpenTelemetry is a new working group that is dedicated to client uh, instrumentation. So most of what you see and what you've seen is really backend based. Of course, you can take the existing JavaScript uh, uh, SDKs and APIs, and you can work it also with client side. But client side does have its own uh, constraints. You need a session ID propagated and things like that that, ha that haven't been modeled into the specification. So there is a new working group for the client instrumentation that aims strictly, squarely at these use cases of instrumenting uh, web pages, web apps, mobile apps, and so on. And uh, so I think this would fit perfectly into both synthetic, synthetic monitoring and, uh, and uh, real, real user monitoring, things that look at your system from outside as a, as a black box. Um, so if you are interested in that, uh, do get involved. Check out this new working group. It's really in the early phases, so you can actually get involved and, and, uh, and influence. Do you have uh, more questions from the uh, virtual audience? From the yeah, we've here. got uh, yeah another one here is um, if we already use um, Prometheus Exporter, is there a convenient migration path for Open Telemetry? Prometheus Exporter from the application. So as I said, the collector, the Open Telemetry collector, it supports the Prometheus format. So you can actually collect it with the uh, OTL collector, and you can relay that over uh, OTLP. Uh, so there is, uh, there is a, a collaboration that has been done to support uh, Prometheus in, on the collection side. As I said, you can also use Prometheus as a backend. So you can also use a remote write exporter to send it to Prometheus as a backend. So uh, you're supported both, uh, both ways. Any other questions about the future, where we're heading, ideas? No. So, I'm Dotan Horvitz, and uh, thank you very much for listening, and uh, see you in KubeCon.